Welcome back everyone to Aussie Scrapper. Now I'm going to share this video today of how I decided to start storing my dies. As you can see, the way that I had it before, it was not working for me. I could never find anything when I needed it and the other problem was I had no idea what I had in my stash. So off I went to Officeworks and I bought these A4 magnetic sheets. So I'm going to try and get as many die cuts onto this magnetic sheet as I can. Um, one to save on storage and two because you only get one sheet. And I can't remember exactly what I paid for, but if you were starting to buy quite a lot, it would it would add up. So I'm trying to keep my costs down so I can spend my money on other stuff. I originally did try using the magnet sheets from one of the junk stores, but they were too flimsy and could not hold the weight of the die cuts. That is why I spent a little bit more money and got these heavy duty magnetic weights from Officeworks, which can really handle all that weight that's on them from all those die cuts, as you can see. The protector sheets that I am using there, they're also from Officeworks, and they are the heavy weight, the premium sheet protectors in A4. They, I buy them in a box of 50 and they're glass clear and they're really strong. They're 70 microns. Sorry about that squeaky sound. That was the door opening. Someone that was kind enough to bring me a nice cup of tea. So I hope this has helped you. If you have also been struggling how to store your die cuts, this is really working for me. I now can flip through my folder and see exactly what I have and I find that I have been using my die cuts a lot more. I have a few of these die cuts as well. They're from the Cuddlebug range. I don't even know if they make these anymore, but I thought I would leave this part in because I decided I wasn't going to throw away these die cuts. Once again, I'm going to be using my 17 micron page protectors from Officeworks. My aim is to make a little pocket for each of these die cuts. Inside the page protector, I've just inserted a small cutting mat. Earlier on, you would have seen me arrange the die cuts all on the sheet protector, just to give me an idea of placement. And all I'm doing now is just cutting a slit there in the plastic and trying to make the first little pocket. Once I can get the die cut in and out of its little pocket easily, I will move on to using my fuse tool to fuse the plastic together. It's a good idea at this point to remove the cutting mat. So there you see I've got my heat resistant mat down the bottom and my fuse tool a couple of times and that is it. That pocket is now not going anywhere and that little die cut now has its own little home. So I'm now inserting the next little die cut. So as my cutting mat won't fit in that little area now, I'm just using the old magnetic sheets that I had from the junk store that really could not take the weight of my die cut. And I'm just using it to, as a cutting mat to uh, slit a little hole there or a little pocket there so that that little die cut has its own little home. I like to always check that I can get the die cut in and out easily and of course I can so I'm now going to fuse the plastic together. So I've got my little fuse tool from We Are Memory Keeper, Keepers and I'm just rolling it there slowly. The trick is to do it slowly so that it's got time to melt the plastic together. I then just repeat the process all over again so that each die cut has its own little pocket. These longer ones I just made with the opening on the side there. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching my videos and for all those that support me and have subscribed to me. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. So here is a bit of a flip through of what it looks like and I will just add this last page to the very end there. All nice, all neat, and I just now keep it on my Calyx unit and everything has a home and it's so easy to find whatever I might look for. 
And yes, the folder is from Officeworks. It's a full ring binder.